Good morning. My name is Mr. Dambaugh. I'm a member of the math department here at Geneva. When my wife and I walked into that doctor's office in February, we did not want to hear the words that we were told. You have cancer. And so they set up a schedule for chemotherapy. And during the late spring and early summer, she went through several doses of chemotherapy. She did not respond well to those treatments. And by the time we got to summer, my wife had lost one third of her body weight. She could not do normal things around the house. I had to help her do many things. So my daughter, who lives in Ohio, said, Dad, why don't we try the Cleveland Clinic? And so we scheduled an appointment in the Cleveland Clinic in August of that same year. And there we met a wonderful man who was a specialist in the type of cancer that my wife had. And after a week of hospitalization, he called us together and he said, I have good news and bad news. What do you want to hear first? We said, well, tell us the bad news. He said, your cancer is throughout your entire body. It is terminal. Well, what's the good news? The good news was, he said, we have been working with experimental uh, antibiotics and drugs, and we have found one which I'm going to put you on, and we hope that it will enable you to at least live a normal lifestyle, even though we can't cure your cancer. For over two years, my wife took that particular drug. You would never know that she had any cancer. She regained most, if not all, of her body weight. She couldn't drive, but she could at least do normal things. And then after 26 months, that drug stopped working. And so we went back into the hospital and we talked to the specialist again and he said, well, we have other possibilities here. What would you like to do? And she said, by all means, if you have other opportunities for me, like you've given me for the last 26 months, please, let's try them. She did not respond well to the new drugs. In November of that year, my wife entered the hospital and after a few days, hooked up to all kinds of machines with all kinds of monitors and cords, too innumerable to mention, she slowly regressed. And on Tuesday, November 16th, <clears throat> my wife took her last breath and I was there with her. We got through the funeral, but then I went home to an empty house, and as I sat there attempting to eat, I ate more tears than I did food. Looking across that table, the loneliness was overwhelming. My pain was great. Thinking back to those last two or three days when she was laying there in the hospital, unresponsive, the trauma was just excruciating. And so I kind of dealt with it, and it was probably, I'm going to say, four weeks. And finally, I guess I'll phrase it as, I guess I calmed down. Because at that point, God literally talked to me. You see, God does not cause cancer. God does not make us make bad decisions. We'll face challenges and circumstances in life that seem unfair, but God is in control. He is loving. And so he said to me, after giving me time to grieve, and he, this is one thing I want you to hear, he understands our need to grieve. So he gave me that period of time to get over my term, my inner turmoil. And then he said to me, Ed, I need to tell you two things. 
First, I loved your wife so much, I had to take her now. Because had I let her live, her pain would have been unbearable. And you would have also suffered greatly. So I had to take her now, and she's with me. Please be at peace with that. And I was. And then he said, Ed, I am not done with you. You have to start living again because I have plans for you. Okay. A little over a year later, Geneva offered me my current position. And in that position, Dr. Stahl, my chairperson at that time, encouraged me to show ways to integrate faith and learning. And now, as many of you know, you get weekly verses to live by. Your God is a great God. He loves you. You need to honor and worship him and listen to him in times of difficulty and stress. And all of you are going to have those times. Bobby Goldsboro sang a song in the late 60s about his deceased lover. It went, the refrain goes something like this. Oh, honey, I miss you, and I'm being good. I'd love to be with you, if only I could. Thank you.